Pedge says she wore shoulder pads to the beach. Of course. That is such a Pedge insight into this, and it's so on the fucking button. Yep, and she follows it up with... And you know what? Good for her. If you know it's happening, as you should, curl your hair, get your nails done, right. pick out a good outfit. It yeah. was in support of this thing that she did. But right. she was just like, why are you saying that you didn't know when you did Wait, didn't? Carl, what? Seven years. Wait, babe, what? Seven years. Seven, seven years. years. What? Seven years, Oh, my God. Babe. Wait, oh, my God. There's a lot of stuff on TV, but not all of it's good. In fact... A lot of it's bad TV. Yo, it's bad TV in your ears. My name is Dylan. I'm saddled up next to one Patrick Hickey. Great to be here. Kaylin, producer of the podcast, is over there behind my glasses. Hello. And the revolving door of support hath continued. It's Summer House. Pat and I are struggling with the tedium of this season. And that's putting it nicely. But thank God. Because tonight... My baby sister Ruby is joining us to break down episode 13. Hi, Ruby. How are you? Doing really well, Dill. Thank you for asking. Happy to be here. Um, Ruby has been breaking down Vanderpump rules with us. Uh, the fans are loving her, uh, especially the ones who are not cheapos. So if you want to hear the entire um, Vanderpump Scandal season breakdown, go to patreon.com slash another podcast network. Don't be a cheapo. It's gross. Right, Patrick? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, so any other public service announcements? I think that's it. Uh Instagram at bad TV podcast. You know, I'm trying to interface with AI oh, to if you want to see what Ruby looks like, uh go to Bad TV YouTube. Did you already pitch that? Nope. Yeah, so both of those things, huge things. Also, go to the iTunes range and reviews. Leave five stars, kind words. Those have been drying up. They cannot dry up. If you're not going to support us monetarily at patreon.com, and I'm, I'm going to be done browbeating you soon. If you're not going to not be a cheapo, then at least leave a five-star review. So you can sleep at night. Say kind words. Don't do it for us. Yeah, do you, it so that you, you can clear your conscience. You you have been tossing. You've been turning. You've been uh, kind of going starfish across the bed. Your partner's going, what's going on? And you can't quite identify it. We've now identified yes. it for you. Fix your ailment. Fix your disease of personality. Go on the iTunes, raise your reviews, leave five stars, kind words. If you're on Spotify, just hit five stars, walk away. So let's get into Summer House. Now, this season has been nothing short of a dumpster fire. Mm -hmm. It has not been mayhem. It has not been shocking. Mm -mm. It has been bad. Mm -hmm. right. I don't want to step on your uh, thoughts. No, no, no. I'm Turkey done. sandwiches. But uh, Dylan, if you remember the cast member that pointed out that this season would be shocking. Which I thought, like, someone would stab somebody or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was Danielle. Patrick. Right. Who was the only person shocked by this engagement? I know I wasn't because I knew it was coming for the last five episodes. The episode when Kyle and Carl were setting up for that stupid party that Gabby had put together that made zero sense. And uh, I think Carl showed him the ring. Or told him he was going to get studio, engaged. You're talking about the Studio 50 Forest party? <laughs> yeah, that dumb thing. Yeah. Yeah. Um, can you believe some of these people are gainfully employed with those ideas coming out they of They make heads? a lot of money, and it makes me angry. <laughs> yeah, me too. Anyway, that was Danielle that said this would be shocking. Now, I don't know how many episodes are, are left, but I think it's wrapping up, seeing as this is their final weekend. It's Labor Day weekend. So I'm thinking we probably got one or two episodes left, and I, yeah. I, I'm not holding out hope for something shocking to happen. Right, right, right. She's a goddamn liar or an insane person. Oh. Either way, I don't like her. And one other note. Oh, I guess this stepped into my <laughs> turkey sandwiches. These are sandwiches. your turkey sandwiches. <laughs> this episode... We're putting the wax paper on this, on this sandwich <laughs> This episode, right now. there is, through any dumb reality show, okay... There's always got to be a through line or an arc of sorts. Right. And given that we just have a bunch of fame fuckers who uh, are, you know, don't really, they're do nothings, there's no real story that developed or anything that came out of this. Sure. Some of the cast members aren't even showing up on the weekends anymore. But those <laughs> yeah. little creators over there at Bravo had one arc in mind, and that was going to be wrapping up this season with a shocking uh, event, which is a proposal. Yeah. Okay, so that's what this was. 
Now, uh, one other uh, note here. Daniel, you made this entire episode, which was supposed to be about an engagement between... You're taking forever. Two loving people, and you made it about yourself. Taking forever. You made it about yourself. And I have to say this. The amount that you (laughs) cried on that episode, Daniel... I mean, it's just... If I died, my wife wouldn't cry Uh, that much. Who's number 88 is... Patrick, I just got if, put in the little cubby. Yeah. No if one my w- nobody's picking if it up. If I died, my wife wouldn't cry as much as Danielle did in this episode over that goddamn proposal. <laughs> A she wouldn't. Person came in and grabbed it. <laughs> Ten turkey sandwiches, uh, ribs. Um, I think it was really good. I think. I have to look inward because the joy I get from watching, like this, was very emotionally taxing for Danielle very clearly sure. and I thought yeah. it was a good episode yeah, because yeah, of right, that so right. um we we just want people to feel something anything really right. I thought it was nice that Corey and Sam like each other <clears> and <throat> won't express it quite yet I oh, think that oh. that was fun um I thought it was a really good episode definitely the best episode of the season so far mm. so I'll give it like a solid, I'm going to give it a good C, a 75 turkey sandwich. Yeah, you, right. Yeah. I'm glad you corrected that because you can't say C, right? Because that's not the scale. It's well, it, I'm turkey sandwiches great, actually is right. what the scale okay. is. Um, speaking of Corey and Sam finding one another, mm-hmm. um, you said that made you happy. Yeah. Um, I hate so fervently the two of them. Mm. Um, and I was talking to my sister-in-law over the weekend about Summer House, said hated Sierra. Um, she said, what's the difference between her and Pedge? Um, and we'll, we'll, we'll get to the difference between Sierra and Pedge a little bit later, but we were talking about Corey and I sent her an Instagram post from Corey. Um, and I guess I'll just throw this to Rubes. Um, Hmm. just go ahead and, and tell people what the picture is and then please read the caption. This is a post from Corey. Yeah, this is a post from Corey. I don't want to talk about this. Yeah. I hate him. Yeah. I hate him. Mm-hmm. Right. He is he is sitting on some type of construction machinery. Yep. In a what I think he believes is like a sexy work pose. Yeah. But he's fully clothed and has like dirt or like construction grime, grime all yeah, over yeah, him. Yeah. He has goggles and a bandana on, still his chain. He's making kind of a growling, sexy growling right. sort of face right, that's right, right. hard. And and yeah, what's the caption, Ruby? And the caption, which is why everyone's uh, covered in vomit, <laughs> is I'm not a gynecologist, but I'll take a look. So I... Um, I take back everything. I, <laughs> I, I just couldn't hate this guy more. Yeah, but you also hate Sam too. Although I was going to put this in Sam my Sam is just the I I I I despise the types of people who feel magnetized to Corey because he's all, he's all grimy because he's building the third gym and stuff and he's saying I'm not a gynecologist but I'll look. Mm-hmm. So how could you like that, right? It's confusing to me how you could like that. Well, it works on some people, apparently, because I think it was Lindsay's mom. She was talking to Sam. She said, when did you know you fell for him? And she said, uh, the third time he spit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Third time he spit in my mouth. Voluminous. I knew. Amounts, yeah. I knew then. Right. Yeah. Anyway. I, I want to Twelve start. pots. Twelve pots. Uh, can I start the show, Dell? Of course, Patrick. Okay. Show starts. I'm so sorry. I, I got... I got distracted because she brought up that she was happy about Sam and Corey, and I got so angry. So I, okay. I, Dylan, I, oh. this is what we do. It's called the podcast. Man. Yeah. <clears throat> Saturday, 27, <laughs> 5 51 p.m. Lindsay and Carl are engaged. And old Patty wants to start down a little countdown clock to Monday, September 4th, 2024, 921 a.m., when they both post a statement on Instagram that reads, we have lovingly chosen to separate as a couple. We right. fell deeply in love so many years ago on right. Sunday, 542 p.m. <laughs> yeah. in 2021, right. and have had a magical oh, journey what? together. Absolutely nothing has changed about how much we love one another, but it is a beautiful adventure that is taking us on different paths for now. Yeah. You, you are still... Traveling the highways and byways of quantum time <laughs> jumps. But, um, yeah, no, perfectly said. Yeah, I'm a cynical bastard, but last note on this. Uh, if Kim, uh, Kim Zolzniak and Corey can't make it, You're what right. hope do the rest of us have? None. You know? None. Anyway. So, Lindsay and Carl get engaged, and everyone 
is happy for them, well, except for the American audience and Danielle. Now, the news gets relayed back to the house via little Kyle, and <laughs> it is one thing to feel betrayed, and she should feel betrayed. Uh, she should feel betrayed. And we're, you and I are going to debate. I'm going to debate both of you, I feel, tonight, because I am on Danielle's side. Now, obviously, she's... A, yeah, see this? See the debate oh, coming? Dylan, yeah, see the debate coming? Now, obviously, what she's... for Corey and Sam, no, I feel for that comment. Continue. Don't, that's such a false equivalency, and I, mm-hmm. I resent what you just said. You just said that you're on her side. I am I on her you, side. Okay, I want you to think about what that means. Well, when we talk we'll about explore what that means right. later. It's just scary. For this to turn into an emotional nuclear fallout is disgusting. <laughs> I agree. Everyone involved, all three of these people, Carl, Danielle, and Lindsay, are fucking weirdos. Yeah. They're so fucking weird. <clears throat> Carl is boring and addicted to the oddities of life because he's sober. And Lindsay is quite literally chemically unwell. Mm-hmm. And Danielle is depressed and she is lashing out. Mm-hmm. We've got an issue with the cord. We've got an issue with the cord. So, Danielle's beside herself, and they cut to Sam, and Sam goes, you know, I'm, like, super happy for them. Sam, you have fucking nothing to do with this, and your dad is currently fastening a fucking noose back at the house. So, please, quiet down. You have nothing to do with this. Yeah, you come when people spit in your mouth, weirdo. (laughs) I want to hear from you. I wonder if she took the um, gynecologist photo. What? I said, I wonder if she took the gynecologist photo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She's like, you know what would be a good caption? <laughs> I was like, wait, I love it. Hey, uh, we cut to Lindsay. She uh, tells us that uh, she never thought she was going to get married, you know, because uh, she's usually attracted to bad guys, you know, like bad guys that, you know, are <laughs> yeah. addicted to cocaine and are so high on coke, they <laughs> right. don't even bring their computer to work. <laughs> Complete 180. <laughs> right. yeah. Well, reformed, right? Reformed. But that would be the only shock of the season if Carl went, just lost it, and started (laughs) just blackout drinking at this little uh, vineyard, Martha's Vineyard thing they're at. Well, he went to the (laughs) hospital instead. Yeah. Um, So it turns out that Carl did involve a ton of other people besides for Danielle, including, and this is the biggest uh, spit in the face, the ick. Oh, yes. The ick was abreast of this proposal. Danielle was not. <laughs> I mean, it's absolutely heart-wrenching I for also, Danielle. I'm I, on her side. I think you should take a minute <laughs> yeah. because if you were proposing to somebody and that, if Cece was in a fight with one of her girlfriends, regardless yeah. of the relationship that the three of you had, yeah, yeah, yeah. and then you went to that girlfriend knowing yeah. that Cecilia was beefing with her yeah, and yeah, had yeah. anything to do with this moment about the two of you yeah, and yeah, this yeah. drama. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not good, I don't think. Now, here's the difference. Um, We've had almost a decade of Danielle and Lindsay being tight. um, As Robert, six six years. Six summers, six years. So that's a a good amount of time. So I do feel as though Danielle has paid plenty of penance being friends with Lindsay for this amount of time. She's taken a glass of uh, of Pinot to the chest for it. Um, she deserves to know. The ick doesn't, well, but the ick knows. Let me point out this entire arc of 12 episodes of Summer House. Dan- Danielle has not been uh, a supporter of this relationship a single minute. Why the fuck would you have to tell her? Well, Danielle Fair. is, she's not quite the observers, but she is a, a muse of sorts for us here because she is the only <laughs> voice of reason. This is right. fucking weird. It's a weird relationship. They're moving very, very fast. And it has this kind of high-frequency, sober, manic pace to it that is fucking weird. odd. Yeah. And Danielle's right about it. 
But why is she so hurt by the fact that he didn't? First because of all, because her life isn't in a good place, right? And she so, just wants to get drunk with her friends. So don't take that person's side when they act irrationally. Well, it, I'm taking her side between her and Lindsay and Carl. I'm. I, it's not. I, I, I'm not choosing Danielle over. Jesus of Nazareth. I'm, I'm choosing but Daniel. You would. No, 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 no. I wouldn't. No, 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 no. I, no, no, I wouldn't. Now, no, all right, I let me wouldn't. throw my hat in this debate. Okay. Jesus was a good man. I know. <clears throat> Danielle's a better woman. Danielle, she can be upset. But dare I say she makes this a little too much about herself with all this crying, especially when she embraces Maya. I mean, it's not like she just found out her uh, college roomie didn't make it after a botched nose surgery, you know? Mm-hmm. Didn't right. wake up. It's your fucking TV friend that didn't share some info with you. Go in the bathroom, cry it out a little bit, come out, and then put your best foot forward that you, uh, you're you putting your stamp of approval on it. I but agree. not Danielle. And that's I, why I don't like her. Oh, fun little thing. Yeah, you're right. So get this. I don't know if it was a barnacle or a little baddie, but that's why you got to be in the Facebook groups because we get all the hot scoop. Right. Someone said that Alex, Fabio, Alex the drunk, <laughs> from below deck Uh-oh. is showing up at that winter house. Oh, God. Wow. Yes. And that it that kind of makes sense because they got some former below deck female well, cast gotta, members showing gotta up. You've got to remember to include the names. Oh, uh, it's uh, Riley Gerber, baby, and no, Katie no, Floyd. No, 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 no. I mean the, the, the name of the fans. Oh, you're right, Dylan. You know what I mean? You, you said someone, and it's got to be name. Mm-hmm. It's tough, though. You know, there's so much tea. There's a lot going posted. on. There's a lot of tea over there. Anyway, right. that's going to be fun if Alex shows up. So we get to the Carl and Lindsay celebratory event, and this is where we find out that not only the Ick knew about it, but, I mean, two dozen other people. And the Ick wants to cuff, comfort her. I think that's a bad idea, Ick. The Ick knowing about it, I think, was like Carl just was like in a room with Kyle talking to him about it, and he was like, I, I, I'm here, I want to know, whatever. Well, the, the Ick was the photographer. Right. So, one. Two... The people who knew about it were from another state that yeah. needed to fly here, so they needed to know before sure, you. And sure. also, Danielle, you live in a ha- He was trying to make it a surprise. I And I want to say, I understand why she is hurt. I think that her reaction was so unbelievably um, unacceptable. Yeah, yeah, it yeah. just it doesn't matter that well, she was hurt. Well, so Danielle is unleashed, um, and <laughs> Lindsay and Carl show up at 9.02. Um, <laughs> now... Danielle proceeds to go to <laughs> almost every single human being at this event. <laughs> and I believe the venue is called the Docket. She, I would say that she even goes up to employees of the Docket. She did. She gave uh, gave the waterworks to the busboy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank God he didn't speak English. Because <laughs> he would have been bored to death. Right, right. Microaggression. So um, it is so... It's just so fucking weird that Carl and Lindsay are engaged. I don't know. Um, this is where um, I... Okay. The differentiating quality between Pedge and the other observers. Mm-hmm. When I was de- having this debate with my sister-in-law about Sierra versus Pedge, I was saying that Pedge is at least funny. Sierra contributes absolutely nothing. She's um, very beautiful. <clears throat> A lot of beautiful people. Sierra's useless Pedge actually, you know, contributes with lines like this. Pedge says she wore shoulder pads to the beach. Of course. That is such a Pedge insight into this, and it's so on the fucking button. Yep, and she follows it up with, and you know what? Good for her. If you know it's happening, as you should, curl your hair, get your nails done, pick out a good outfit. It was in support of this thing that she did, but she was just like, why are you saying that you didn't know when... You did. Wait, Carl, what? Seven years. Wait, babe, what? Seven years. Seven, what, seven years. What? Seven years, Oh, my God. Babe? Wait. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. So, Kyle lets Carl know about the whole Danielle being devastated thing. And Carl gives the most Carl answer ever. He goes, given the way that things have gone over the past few months, I, I just wanted to let the girls handle it themselves. I, I cannot stand these fucking pine sap answers anymore and they're just these fucking they just dribble slowly out of his mouth and they put you to sleep and you have to fight off 
it's it's like a black site torture instrument him talking it just it's so fucking mind scramblingly boring and and sober i just can't fucking stand the guy so i, I think, need to take a break yeah i'm don't not worry. making any sense and and, and Dylan, don't too worry. Hot. Okay. your your okay. the, your calls for action have been answered they've recast most of these people we're, hopefully we never have to see these people ever again we're gonna hopefully we get to see alex uh, what were we gonna say again uh um sorry I was going to say, I think that Carl has gotten way too much in his life because he's tall. I think that yeah. if he were Kyle's height, yeah. being as non-dynamic and not, like, cool, funny, he's really nothing. At least when he was coked out and drunk, he was, like, life of the party kind right, of guy. Right. Now he's just, you know. He's Carl. Yeah, he's Carl. And I think that for some people it's fine, but for these people it's not. No, I think no. if he was Kyle's height, he'd still have a problem with cocaine. <laughs> I agree. I agree. Yeah, yeah. I really do. Because he wouldn't have the self-respect uh, because of the societal norms uh, to, to get clean. So I'm yeah, happy, yeah, I guess, yeah. that Carl's tall. No, he is a tall drink of water and he works out uh, relentlessly because that is his new addiction. Yeah, exactly. Fitness. So... Um, well, he uh, loves pizza too. He likes making pizza. Uh, Corey does pull ups, and Sam. Well, we get back to the house, and um, Corey does pull ups on the uh, the lip of some molding above a door, and Sam says uh, that was so hot. Um, how could you feel anything other than here's hatred? My, here's my question: for that? Who else? <laughs> who else? will be with either of them. That's, I think, why I like them together. Because I hate right, them both. Right, you know? right, right. Well, as we get to the tail end of the episode, I'm not getting ahead of myself there now, but the way that the Sam and Corey, where they talk about their future, is very reminiscent of Winterhouse when Corey was with that redhead, Jess. Mm-hmm. Uh, she was blonde. I think I'd like to still she see you blonde. after all the cameras go away, you know? And she was it like... It means nothing. I'll suck your dick and you don't have to sleep in my room. And he was like, okay, cool. Game on. Yeah, yeah that sounds nice. Tight. Yeah. yeah. Tight. All right, so next day. Next morning. We have a trademark summer house event. Our next partner is a product that I use literally every day. I started taking AG1 because... You want to optimize your day and be a better self. Thank you. You know, you have been so bright, so bubbly, so electric lately Mm -hmm. it's because i got a regimen of ag1 i take my nice little scoop of powder i drop it in my hot cup of warm water i pound it down it's got like 90 vitamins in that oh you do a hot cup of warm water oh yeah morning well you can do cold water you can put it in smoothies it's very very easy to put it into your daily regimen and also like listen it's not the greatest tasting thing in the world, but that is how you know it works. Okay, if you have a naked juice and it tastes like Jamba juice, it's not good for you. AG1 is. It's lifestyle friendly, whether you eat keto, paleo, vegan, dairy free, or gluten free. It costs you less than $3 a day. You're investing in your health, and it's cheaper than that cold brew habit. And also, Athletic Greens is climate neutral certified. Are you, do you want to help the planet? Yeah, I think we all do, Dylan. Okay. Uh, right now, it's time to reclaim your health and arm your immune system with convenient daily nutrition. It's just one scoop in a cup of water every single day. That's it. No need for a million different pills and supplements to look out for your health. To make it easy, Athletic Greens is going to give you a free one-year supply of immune-supporting vitamin D and five free travel packs with your first purchase. All you have to do is visit athleticgreens.com slash another batch pod. That is athleticgreens.com slash another batch pod to take ownership over your health pick up the ultimate daily nutritional insurance Mm -hmm. so athletic greens baby it's just that easy and hey it doesn't say that this is one of the benefits on the on the you know on the packaging but i was at the deli the other day and i take a lot of this stuff i'm pretty sure it helps you read people's minds all right go to uh, athleticgreens.com slash another batch pod ruby any thoughts check it out um uh, pat Yo! You've been going on a lot of uh, trips to... To uh, to get some takeout? Yeah, to get well, some takeout. Well, I was, uh, before we uh, signed up for Green Chef. Yeah. It's uh, saved my marriage, Dylan. Are you happier now that your marriage is saved because of Green Chef? I absolutely am. It's uh, it's changed the game for us. Well, we now uh, make okay. love three times a week. Yep. Uh, we smile at each other. I feel like we can look into each other's eyes. And, and You've told me three times a week is too much, but... Not when you have Green Chef show up at your house because it uh, leaves a, it creates a, a lot more time. Well, and also more nutrition, better nutrition. Exactly. 
Um, you can choose from 50 plus weekly menu and market items with the option to mix and match meals from different dietary preferences in the same box without changing your plan. You can order vegan one day, keto the next. Green Chef is the number one meal kit for eating well with dinners that work for you, not the other way around. Okay, With Green Chef, you're reducing your food waste by up to 23% versus grocery shopping. How many times have you thrown out all the chives? Exactly. You needed a couple chives, exactly. and now they're 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 black, and they they have a a, a pus to them at the bottom of that drawer where all the Not chives. With green go chef, Not with Green Chef, everything's carefully chef. measured out for you. Bring more flavor to your table this May with Green Chef's wholesome, elevated recipes featuring seasonal organic produce and unique farm fresh ingredients like rainbow carrots, bok choy, oh. and beautiful, beautiful olives. Okay, we've told you. All you need to hear, Pat, the lovemaking, the, the vitality, the not going to Paquito Ma saying, we don't want it that way. Can you do it this way? And them saying no. So what you need to do now is go to greenchef.com slash below deck 60 and use code below deck 60 to get 60% off plus free shipping. That's greenchef.com slash below deck 60 and use promo code below deck 60 to get 60% off plus free shipping. Hey, call the action. You guys buy one of these things. Do what my wife and I do. You know that film uh, Ghost where Patrick Swayze wraps his arms around Demi Moore while yeah. she's making the clay? Right. I did that to my wife while she was cooking some Green Chef fettuccine dish. Yeah. Take a picture with your loved one doing that, and Patty and I, uh, Patty will uh, give you a little shout out on the podcast. It's the number one meal kit for eating well, Rubes. Any thoughts? Eat up. All right, so it's flag football day at the beach. Jesus fucking Christ. This, By is, the way, this is what, a seven-second segment? It's seven, horrible. But it ends up being a seven-minute segment. By the way, poorly explained. I, I'm hearing about the Vixens and the green ties. Mm-hmm. I, I don't know what they're doing. What is this? What is this? They didn't have the goods. What were the green ties? Why were they there? Never explained. Right? It wasn't. Okay. Uh, so Carl and Lindsay have a chat about... Um, what a evil cunt Danielle was last night for being the way she was being. and Which was clinically fucking insane. Sure, it was. But the reason why I don't know if I can watch this show anymore is because I feel as though I hate every single person on it, and it didn't used to be like that. If I have to watch Lindsay fail to recognize a reasonable complaint that somebody has with her one more time, and it's not just that she doesn't understand people's gripes with her, Mm -hmm. it's that she lashes out in a very high-pitched Lindsay, um, ferociously dumb blonde kind of way, and I just I can't listen to it anymore. (laughs) I can't. Dylan, what happened, if you love a show so much, even if old Patty really tries to convince you it's it's what we should recap, yeah. say no. No. It, it, they, when we recap shows, we ruin them for everyone. They die. That's what happened with this show. Here's what I'll say, Carl. We don't have to worry about a single thing that she's saying anymore because she's not a supporter of, I mean, it's just like, how many fucking times? <laughs> Carl's just like, okay, yeah, no, you're right. Yeah, no, you're right. I like it. Okay, love yeah, you, you're right. I love you. Um, love you, babe. All right, so Corey and Sam want to see each other after this. Mm-hmm. You know, you said that they're like perfect for one another. Like, who else would date mm-hmm. them? I think, like, you know, thank God, bestiality is frowned upon. Mm-hmm. Perhaps even illegal. Mm-hmm. But I feel like a corgi would work well oh. w- with with one of them. Corgis are far too smart. You think? Yeah, way too smart. What, um, what like a golden doodle? Also way too smart. I yeah. think he would need a very damaged rescue dog that was inbred. <laughs> and then Corey would be like, I can get you in shape. And Sam would be like, I don't really like it, but you like it. So let's like adopt it. And then she'd abuse it. Uh, hey, these two have already admitted their little uh, taboo stuff. Okay. And that's uh, Patrick, it's a slippery slope. <laughs> True. True. Yeah. True. But I think it's that, that, you know, I think they like to rent a hotel room and have one of those good times. And then the sure, poor maid yeah, shows up yeah. and they say, what's with all the fucking spit on the walls? Yeah. And the next day she's like, babe, oh my God. And she holds up her shirt and she's like grotesquely bruised. And he's like, oh, it's a fucking, dis- <laughs> these two are fucking. Okay. Let's get back to the city. Gabby sits down with a guy named Matt. Oh I think. Oh my God. And we play. A word association game? 
<laughs> as is customary for a first well, date. They bond over dogs and engage in that kind of small talk two people have who intend to never see each other again. Well, oh, I love raspberries too. Well, it's this thing where she's like, uh, he's like, so where'd you go to college? She's like, Trinity. He's like, that's the name of my first dog. And she's like, the name of my dog is Harry P- Prescott Potter. And he's like, it was really hard to watch. <laughs> and I felt so bad for them both. Like, cause you can't. At that point, do you say to the person, like, you know what? This isn't going well. Because the waiter's going to come over inevitably and be like, do you guys want another round? And then you do that, like, oh, are you? I, I'm good. Are you? And then if yeah. one person commits, you're like, mm, Wouldn't it be funny if someone said, I'll take one for the road? That, I, I, <laughs> and you should. Yeah. At that point, Matt. Yeah. Get away from her. God, that's such a good point. When that second round of drinks comes around, it has to be. A unanimous yes for the table. Like pretty resounding. And if yeah. it's not, you get sick and get out. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, look at that. I stabbed myself in the hand with the <laughs> fork. Went right through. I, 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 went, go. I gotta go. This is bad. Um, all right. So <laughs> let's have a theory yeah. about Gabby. Yeah. I don't think she's nearly as weird as she She is the one person that I feel is indulging in a character. Totally. I think well actually I don't think it's a character I think it's a caricature that's very real that's she's her. just a very basic wealthy and girl. leaning into it yeah I bet her and I would get along swimmingly is my point I think I'd get along with her too same same I don't think I'd get along with Sam no no that's all all right let I'd be like um <laughs> just stop and she'd be like oh yeah yeah, yeah, and I'd be like, no, don't, don't say anything. Another thing that was really cringy when, um, she, I don't know what point in the episode this was, but it just made me hate. I was just filled with hate everywhere. She's eating a hot dog or something, and Corey's like doing your little food dance. I love when you do that, and she's like, oh, really? Oh <laughs> my god! Not anymore, Sam. No, we would be like, um, do you know what MK Ultra is, Sam? She's like, <laughs> <gasps> oh my god, I love Ulta Beauty. <laughs> All right, so let's talk about vaginas with Amanda. Ruby, what is going on with Amanda? First of all, none of us, myself included, should speak on this, but I think that what happened is apparently she has like insanely out of whack estrogen levels, and she is someone who is a 30 something year old, and she has the estrogen levels of someone who's post menopausal. And I think that she's just been feeling kind of off for a bit, and now this is the answer. Right. Either way, you know, you have a female audience PSA. Get you know, go to the gynecologist once a year. Go to the gynecologist. You really fucking should. And it's crazy because the good news is, is with uh, innovations in the medical field, you can be anorexic and just take estrogen oh, pills, sure. and you'll be fine. <laughs> for sure, yeah. my girl. Yeah, I, I do want to point out uh, the way that she determined this was not by seeing a uh, professional. <laughs> she she Googled this. Did Patrick, she? No, no, no. She did a blood test kit with her friends, okay? Uh, and then Googled what the results might mean. <laughs> well, I That's love... That's, like, different. Okay. She was talking to, uh, she was talking to uh, her husband about this for, like, mm-hmm. the first time in eight months of no period. And she's like, I've just been having... that said that, like, I'm prone to low energy and crazy mood swings and uh, temperament. And he's like, yeah, that's fucking... That's what I've been telling you. Spot on. You've been a fucking nightmare for like a year. He is so supportive. Uh, so Greg and Pedge head to uh, the summer house. They talk about collected uh, courses. Of <laughs> Sorry. Ew. By the way, Paige. I, I meant to do a snore sound, but it was like a. Disgusting. Uh, it was disgusting, yeah. right? It was, it was so gross, and I'm so sorry. Now, now, you did point out we're going back to that uh, weekend <laughs> house, accepted. but it's the last weekend vibe, September 2nd, 4 32 p.m. <laughs> and then Paige says something that's wildly narcissist in the car. She says that. Uh, oh, yeah. She notoriously gets drunk on Labor Day. Oh, I thought. The thing that you were going to talk about was that she said when she doesn't want to move to Charleston, it makes Greg feel less than, and that stresses her out. Oh, right. That too. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That was just the truth, though. Pedge is just, she's so Pedge. Um, so everyone arrives at the house as well as the provisions. Corey is going to be cooking the dinner um, for the weekend just to say thanks to everybody. Um, so it will be what? like um, Protein powder. Yeah. And steak. Yeah. Eggs. Lots of eggs. 32 eggs per person every morning. Right. So Danielle and Carl and Lindsay. um, 
we're, we we arrive back at this. Mm-hmm. Can um, I point out that Danielle's boyfriend Robert clearly hates her? Yeah, he always is there for five minutes and announces to whoever whoever will hear in the kitchen. Hey, just so you guys know, uh, I'm leaving pretty early tomorrow morning. Yeah. He's already got one foot out the door once he walks in the door. Right, which is why she is, you know, belabored mm-hmm. psychologically lately. Mm-hmm. Again, um, you don't get to act okay. the way that you... It's like when people have like a... Like if your parents get divorced, you can't become a serial killer. That's no, not no, fair. No, you no, know, no, so no, if you're having okay. a tough time in your relationship, you can't act like a wet demon at an <laughs> engagement party. Yeah, yeah, yeah understood. Yeah. But st- you know. 100%. No. Still bad form for Robert, though. Yes, agree. Oh, ter- I mean, he hates her. <laughs> you know, I throw a lot of parties here. Every once in a while, there's someone that will go, they arrive and they find me and they go, hey, we're so happy to be here. We might duck out in a bit. Stay home. Or Stay home. Are you talking about me? No, I'm just saying in general, it makes you, as a party thrower, hey, you know, we worked all you know, day, you but we want to. You say that, but you're, 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 you're lying. Right Here's, now. You, no. you want everybody here. I do Even want, for a little bit. And you know, it's that, people like you that well, really- Well, do an piss, Irish goodbye. It's really, it's people I'll like you. I'll be so drunk, I won't even know you left. You people <laughs> make me so angry because you say stay home, but if you stay home, you're going to be upset. Yep. But if you come and you're not here for the amount of time that you think is two appropriate- hours. Two hours, way too long- you get offended, so it's a lose lose situation. Yeah, I, yeah. I, Irish goodbye. So you for, show up, you commit to two hours, you leave after an hour. So if people, uh, so for people like Dylan and I that don't like it, you as a as a hosting person would prefer that we show up, we say hello, we're happy to be here, and then after about an hour, we've said goodbye, or we you don't say goodbye, to sneak out. No, we just it's get the fuck another out. lie. Sneak this out. is just another lie. You wouldn't be okay with that either. Oh, I'm. Yeah, no. Do you send texts the next day it's like, hey, like, why did you leave? Well, because would you have preferred that I found you after forty seven minutes and said we're about to hit thirteen? And at That's least my point, I never do that. At least you're this person. You're the person who has a quiet hurt, but you keep it to yourself. You're not the kind of person oh, that goes. Oh, I keep notes. Yeah, I know you keep notes, but you're not the kind of person that goes. Oh, we're you just got here? No, I didn't just get here. I would never I got do that. Here thirty seven minutes ago, mm-hmm. um, and I don't care that dinner is going to be ten minutes away because I know that's a lie. It's dinner in forty five minutes. I don't want to be here anymore. I never do that. If you're going to leave, I'll just quietly. Hey, yeah. yeah, so yeah, Lindsay well. um, uh, begins screaming about Danielle again. Um, I have a question. Yeah. Why is Chris here? Why is the ick still here? Not sure. In case something goes wrong because he's a Marine. Ugh. I think that's why. She she has this uh, OTF where she's screaming about how Danielle made the entire engagement about herself mm-hmm. and how they're not just not best friends. They're not friends anymore. Again, I can't do this thing where I hear Lindsay scream about her myopic side of her reality. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's, and I feel it's really so bad taxing. for Carl, too, because like I he don't. can't, his whole life, if he doesn't do what he should do, which is run all this off Ryan. very, very soon. Yeah. Don't make deposits for things. No. Break your fucking lease and pay the whatever you have to pay. <laughs> I'm serious. Go home. Live with your mom and your lovely stepdad. Meditate. Get it together for yeah. six months or something. And move to a city like Denver. Yeah. And and Dude, never Carl talk to Lindsay is again. so Denver. He is. Or He's he, so Denver. He, I don't want him to start drinking again. A lot of outdoor coke. activities. He would be happy Can't go horseback Denver. riding in New York? No, you can't. No. You can't. It, it's even... How difficult is it to jog? Because I know that Kelly Ben Simone jogs... She uh, jogs beautifully. Beautifully in New yeah. York, but she holds up a lot of traffic. Yeah. Um, I have a very big fear that my boyfriend will get hit by a car when he runs. Right. So you can't jog. Uh, okay. So we get to dinner, and this is where Robert has to confront Carl. And you say that he hates Danielle. I don't think that he hates her because he mounts an earnest defense of her here. This scene was asked of da- – Danielle asked <clears throat> Robert to do this. Yeah. And this – him doing this scene, Robert hated her so much. No, 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 no. That this was why they broke up. I think Either that's that or was an audition for a weird show uh, on the Food Network. You sound like Rush Limbaugh right now. I think that's a bad take. <laughs> I think that he... I heard Bono's one of the biggest cheaters out there. Obama's wife has got a cock. <laughs> and if you don't know that, know it now. She's got a big fucking cock. And I'm fat. <laughs> 
<laughs> hey, no politics. He did say that about Bono. Broke my heart because I believe the fat bastard. I'm like, Bono? Bono's cheating on his wife? He's yeah. a God-fearing man. Right. But was he? No, he wasn't. Oh. He lied about it. Well, I believe it, right? That's why he did so well for all those years. Am I right? Am I yeah. right? Rest in power, Rush. <laughs> I think he's dead. I he's was dead, say, but he was buried with a medal of freedom, I think. <laughs> okay, well. We no, no politics. Him. No politics. Kidding. The Wren's in the house. No, no politics. But what I will say is I think that <laughs> I think that Robert hates Danielle, but I think he also hates Carl. So he was like, I'll fucking take a stab at him. Why not? And a stab he takes. I'm so proud of, of uh, Robert in this morning, or er, in this morning, <laughs> in this moment. He sits Carl down. And they begin to have a dialogue about what transpired. And Carl attempts to Carl Robert, mm-hmm. um, meaning he tries to put him to sleep with this kind of HR orientation day horseshit that he does. Now, Robert isn't buying it. Carl says, I didn't tell any of the girls. And he goes, no, nope, see, that's what you're, that's the problem. She's not any of the girls, right? Her and Fair point. Lindsay have been friends for a very long time, so that's not going to work, right? Yeah, but Robert, she hasn't been supportive of our relationship the entire time. And he says, well, if it's that big of a deal, and this was my favorite moment, the killing blow, he goes, if having a conversation with Danielle about your relationship makes you uncomfortable, then I hate to say it, but I think you might be uncomfortable with your relationship. All right, that's it. I need the cameras away from me. No, is this like another new trope of like reality people that are telling, I know it's always been around. It feels like I'm watching more shows where people are going, no cameras. Monique and Candace are literally swinging at each other and they don't ask for the cameras (laughs) to be put away. Paul, don't follow me, man. Yep. Not right now. Yeah. Um, So it's, it's, Telling that this struck a a nerve. Well, Carl was in the hospital the week before he proposed because he had a panic attack that sent him to the hospital. Right. So him him not being yeah get her get her done because Adderall is not coke. a drug. Well, it is a drug. It's a good one though because doctors prescribe it. You know. Well, yeah. Car- I would just say to Carl, Carl, Carl. You gotta move to Denver. You gotta you gotta call this thing off because this is not the metaverse, okay? You cannot just go on a jog and have your problems fixed. Berries will not fix your problems. But berries and a jog fix Carl and Lindsay's problems because what Carl and Lindsay will do is they will scream at each other. And then they'll wake up the next morning, he'll go on a jog, and then they'll eat bagels together without bringing it up at all, which is fucking psychotic. And we've talked about burping mm-hmm. the fault lines before. This is building up to a cataclysmic Instagram post <laughs> in 2024. Talking September about- at 921 right. a.m. You're right. No, you're right. You know? So, um, Are that- they going to have kids, though? They might have TV babies. I, you make a lot of money off I, that. I, I agree. I think that they're going to get married, and I think that Lindsay will get pregnant. Well, good luck, everybody. Uh, iTunes ratings and reviews. If you want to hear Rubes break down Vanderpump with us, go to patreon.com slash another podcast network. Join us on YouTube, Instagram, and uh, yeah, keep those reviews coming. We love you guys very much. I'm Dylan saying goodbye. Rubes, say goodbye. Bye-bye. Pat. Later, dudes. Kaylin. Bye-bye. There's a lot of stuff on TV, but not all of it's good. In fact, a lot of it's bad. TV.